Dang, I forgot to put desktop audio on, so no music accompaniment with that. Sorry. Sorry, Zephyrus and Saeed. So, I have some stuff loaded up. Let's look at this. Did he have an earring? Yeah, I guess he did. And, uh, did I remember that? Maybe I did. So I was going through some ancient stuff, and I was because I was looking. I was looking for this, but I found why well, I found some old stuff, and I also found I recorded a lot of video. So I have the entire commander recorded. I have the entire um, that helmet that I posted a time lapse of. I think I've got that all recorded too. I had multiple recordings of that. So I've got some Rancor reference. I can go ahead and get this guy up and running. So I got, that's a good one. Uh, that one's a little, and then I won't do any spoilers from, from anything. No spoilers, probably. Cool, so let's grab it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have this stuff up here. I got Quadro up and running. If you if you like PRF, feel free to use PRF. I like Quadro because I can kind of move stuff around and have it kind of work on my screen. Let me get a full one here. Here we go. Alrighty, alrighty. So load tool. We're gonna go to streaming. Uh, Rancor. Oh, he's already painted and everything. <laughs> now the problem is, I did this a million years ago. So dinosaurs were still walking the earth. And so that means this thing is not set up. Um, this is not an ideal setup for this creature. Oh, really? Hold on, I need a wake on tablet. Sorry, whack him. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it is. There we go. So we have a start. And uh, <laughs> I didn't use the back of them, so we'll go ahead and finish that out today too. And I'm betting we have subdivision history. So this is an instance where if this geometry is real important to me, I could, <laughs> and it's not, I could freeze subdivision levels and then, you know, add whatever I needed to and then unfreeze but boy I can I can just take what I need and re re uh, apologize it so let's go in here and start splitting this little guy up and um, yeah this stream will be about uh, a rancor a rancor the story of a rancor my rancor all right I think I've got everything I need okay so uh, we have subdivision levels here, and uh, I need I need access to to basically everything on him, and you know, so I'm going to do the inside of the mouth, the tongue, the shoulders, any any place where I can do again where there's like a like a like a seam line I can take, like his whole shoulder, probably his head, again inside of his mouth, all of that can be. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. All of that can be uh, split up. Uh, I think without without losing much. So I'm gonna say, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna clone. What is this? Oh, that was his tail. <laughs> Man, this is that's a sad tail. Let's go ahead and delete that out of our scene. This is an oldie, guys. Um, okay. So you have X symmetry turned on. Tap X on your keyboard. Align cursor to surface off. That's under preferences edit and. I'm gonna go ahead and clone him off here. Oh, from yesterday's stream, or not yesterday's, Tuesday stream. Uh, preferences, Gizmo 3D. Um, I have large icons turned off and, because it was a little bit crashy. And then I saved my config and I restarted it and it still turned back on. So turn it off, save config, restart ZBrush. And then maybe I think it'll stay off. So it seemed to have stayed off. So I think we're good. So I've cloned this guy off. I'm gonna go ahead and say delete lower and we're gonna have X symmetry turned on. I'm, I don't need the poly paint right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. We'll go back here to our startup material. Then I'm just gonna start splitting things off. And that's why I did a, um, what's it called? Delete lower. 
on the subdivision levels. I don't need subdivision levels. So multiple things I'm going to, it's always, always for me, your mileage may vary, but I hate, hate working. Let me get a back view if I can find one. Uh, oh, there's a decent one. I'm going to put these up here. Yes, yes. Um, and this kind of swings up. That's not a big deal. Boy, he's got spikes all over him, doesn't he? I don't like working on on a like one Z tool that's like 160 million polygons. I like working on multiple Z tools that are like four million polygons. So I'm gonna go ahead and got the borders here. I'm gonna go ahead and use mask lasso, and then we'll just do a quick cleanup with a mask pin. I think that'll go faster. There we go. And even stuff like stuff that makes sense to have separately, like the bones and the skin. We'll go ahead and. Uh, split those off too. So we have this. Let's look at our polygroups here. Okay, I'm going to hit Control W, which is group mask, clear mask. Let's go ahead and turn off line. I'm going to take these, Control Shift drag to invert. These polygroups are all worthless. So just hit Control W. And uh, I missed one. That's okay. Because what I'm going to end up doing is dynameshing this stuff anyway. And I don't even mind if I lose this detail. So I'm not overly concerned. Uh, in fact, what we could do is we can go ahead and just split these off. So Control Shift drag. Uh, control shift drag again. Let's go ahead and turn off display properties double and we'll say split hidden. And then once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and have the eyeballs turned off for all of this. So while I split hidden, they'll actually disappear. How did I do this? Yikes. This is back before I knew about subtools. Or is this so old that subtools didn't even exist? Is this ZBrush 2.0? Uh, okay, so this actually might be easier. So instead of using masking, because that's going to be slow, let's go ahead and use select lasso and just grab the pieces that we need. And then now we can just quickly go through here and be like, okay, give me, give me that tongue. Yes. And we'll go here. And around. So that way you can see exactly what you're getting. You don't have to worry about masking and Oh, I didn't quite get that mask good enough. Don't worry about that. Just get in here, get what you need. Control shift drag to invert that selection. And then again, split hidden. Since we have the eyeball off, it'll just disappear and stay disappeared. The teeth might be, eh, that's fine. Let's go ahead and get rid of these teeth because I'm going to replace these teeth anyways. But I would like them as a placeholder. And if you're going to start your own Rancor, you know what, I'll talk about that because it should be pretty easy. I would probably use Z spheres, although just like anything else in ZBrush, your mileage may vary. And if you see, you noticed you got a little, you missed a little bit, just control shift drag to invert and then just hop back out and then just add this inverted selection to your selection here. And again, uh, these are just placeholders, so I don't need to be super careful. Um, Many, oh, we have 10 million polygons. That's not terrible. And I want to say this was for a Star Wars Galaxies card uh, way back in the day. There we go. Invert, split hidden. Super entertaining, I know. One of my more entertaining live streams. Um, I, you know what, uh, melanated, I don't use, it's been a, it's been a minute since I've used ZBrush myself. Uh, yeah, my 3D model. Yeah, this one, yep, this one, uh, this was hand painted, just kind of spray. And you know what, if we get around to it, we'll, we'll, we'll do another pass too. Um, oh, it's not, anything I do isn't easy ever. It is easy. It's, uh. It's certainly not, what would you call it? It's not rocket science, for sure. Uh, no no advanced techniques on my show. We're all just here having fun. Now, I, okay, if you want to replace these eyeballs, I'm going to go into my custom menu for my spheres, but you can go into BI Brush Insert IMM Primitives, hit M on your keyboard, or scroll on up here, and just grab what you need. And let's say grab a sphere 16. We have X symmetry turned on. I'm going to hit W. I'm going to push this back in here. 
because why would you try to man i am you know what i'm actually impressed with myself my old self who actually made this thing out of one solid <laughs> piece what a pain let's go ahead and say control shift um let's look last let's find i'm gonna go ahead and do a hide point that's on your visibility hide point menu and then do a split hidden and we'll split those eyeballs off and again since our original eyeball was off all the subsequent sub tools are off and we're good to go. Now again, I'm looking for those natural seam lines and I want as many as possible. Again, I like working with, I like working with a bunch of sub tools and it allows us to really get in here and fold these pieces over each other even when we're dynameshed, uh, which is cool. So again, I'm just gonna see, it's first day with a freeze here in Texas. So uh, I don't know if my dexterity is gonna be great. I'm a little bit, cold in my fingertips and it wasn't that great to begin with to be honest but we'll try and I can always fix it later okay we got the head separated out pretty good I'm gonna grab this and again I'm going to like I've been talking about I'm gonna go ahead and separate that inside of the mouth out too I think so we're gonna go ahead and say split hidden we're getting there we're almost there and in this instance it may be easier to go down here to display properties, flip, uh, morph target, give me a break, delete morph target, uh, flip, and then I'm gonna grab the inside of the mouth here so I can, this makes it a little bit easier to see the mouth bag, you know, and I could probably recreate that mouth bag fairly easily, but we'll just take what we got here. You never know when you might save yourself some time here all righty mm -hmm, mm -hmm. looking good and actually in this case let's turn double back on you'll see i have it in my custom menu because i'm in there a bit okay invert that one more time um double turned off yeah we'll do this uh we'll go ahead and split hidden and then make sure we flip these back here flip it back there we go you, you, all the way back up here. And on this main one here, I'm gonna shoot that to the top, shift, bent, up arrow, and then we're gonna go down here to um, morph target. I'm gonna go ahead, because I don't want a bunch of stuff. I mean, you know what I could do? Z plugin, clean tool utility. Is there a, yeah, delete morphs all. There we go. Get rid of all my morph targets, don't need them. And then back in here, perfect. This whole arm section here needs to go and I wish I would have had time to do this before I started because again like I said this is boring as heck but necessary and especially like you can always you can start out your model uh, in multiple multiple pieces even even if you don't have like a natural seam line to cut across just go ahead and be like you know what who cares I'm just gonna have the arm separate I'm gonna have the head separate and then when you get it to a certain point where you got everything blocked out and you can navigate and you've been navigating freely then you can go ahead and say okay this one say split hidden uh, then you can dynamesh them together reproject your details with a Z remesh from your envelope and you're good to go and this piece uh, kind of goes back behind here. Yeah, we'll take this whole chunker. All this. Split hidden. Uh, the whole peck area. And again, I don't know exactly what's going on on the back, but we'll figure it out. If we need to split more, we'll split more. Who cares? Split hidden. And the whole belly. And the good news is this thing is almost, I mean, even looking at the reference, he's almost broken up like a like a Kenner toy. Um, <laughs> he's got some real convenient seam lines in his folds, so that's neat. Split hidden. I could even, you know what, I bet I could even find one in here. If I, eh, do I need an upper thigh lower? Yeah, you know what, I might. We'll just take it. Yoink. Yeah, let's grab this. Uh, another thing you can try to do is you can go over here, control shift, let's hit W. Now let's do a quick save. I uh, hit W and then control drag down 
your geometry and depending on how your geometry was set up um, it might kind of follow nicely so there we go and I'll kind of cut through in there and then you can again just kind of clean that up with uh, mask lasso or mask pin and before I do a hide point or something I'll sometimes go in here just control alt tap a couple times just to clean that up or sharpen it up and then we'll do again visibility hide point and then we'll do a split hidden and I'm gonna hit the down arrow so we can go to that next sub tool and you know let's grab these feet out too same technique here control tap um, what did I say hide point yeah I'll wake up in a second everybody split hidden and then while we're on these feet let's go ahead and grab these toe nails off because those are going to be separate too same thing with the horns and then we'll be good to go after I get the inside of the mouth split hidden And don't worry, when I'm done with this, I'm going to post chapters, and you can skip this whole part. Sorry, everybody watching this live. You get to you get to live the journey. Of me making lasso selections. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and turn everything back on. Shift eyeball, we got everything back. And now uh, we'll go to the arm real quick. I think the arm we can keep, but let's go ahead and grab that hand off. Hands are usually worthwhile, maybe working on separately. Mask pin, control alt tap, so you know where that mask line is if it gets a little shady. Hide point, split hidden, down arrow to select that subtool, and we'll go ahead and grab these. I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these little goobers. So the first one you're going to do is a positive visibility selection, and then you're going to control shift alt to do a negative visibility selection, then you'll go back in and clean that up. And if you need to, control shift alt to invert that selection and then grab what you need from here. And I'm probably being overly careful. But you know what? I've already I've already done that hard work 10 years ago. Uh, might as well keep as much of it as I can, although a lot of this isn't great. Not that what I'm going to be doing today is all that great. 10 years later, how much have I really improved? I may have even gone backwards in some parts. Seem like I've forgotten more than I remember nowadays. The ravishes of age. All right, I think we've got these here. Control Shift Drag. Go ahead and split hidden. There we go. We got that. Uh, anything else major? We got the teeth already split off. The head's looking good. We can pop some of these little scabby guys off. The major ones. Um, yeah, we can do that real quick. So Control Drag. Ooh. Heater kicked on and it's cold air. That'll wake me up. So any bony outcroppings, anything that's going to be a different material, literally like a horn poking through skin, we can go through and make sure those are separate. Because that just makes sense. And it makes it a lot easier for you to work on. Uh, I know when I was first starting out and why this thing is all one piece, is I guess subtools were kind of scary for me. I was like, I don't know. It's just a lot to think about. Uh, but now I don't think. I've, I've figured out how to use subtools without using my brain, which is great, and I highly recommend it. So we're going to hold down Control-Alt-Tap. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit Control-W, make it a polygroup, why not? And then we'll do another quick split hidden. So how you do that is, uh, if you want to turn everything else on, you can, again, shift to touch the eyeball, and then shift to touch the eyeball, and that'll turn everything on and off. And if I want to work on any two things in particular, like the back and the head, over here, just Alt-Tap these, and then shift bent up arrow or bent down arrow as long as you know where they are and then shift turn the eyeballs off and then you've got these on back on and now you can work on these three um, independent of folders independent of like going through here and scrolling I hate scrolling so just having my objects 
And even if this was like an outliner with an object view, I would still work the exact same way. Um, it wouldn't it wouldn't help me that much to go, oh, let me just, now that I have an object outliner, let me go over there and do it. What the hell with that. Just whatever's on my screen is what I want to play with. Now, when it gets really complex, like I've got a mech with 250 subtools, that tune may change a bit. But even within that, um, I guess what I would like is the ability to do that shuffle subtools within a folder. If I could be like, hey, lock this folder in the objects and then let me move these objects within the folder around quickly. So I could isolate by folder. And then I could go through and like move subtools around as I see them. Uh, that might be cool. So again, hide point. I've been using this thing all morning. Why can't I find it now? There it is. Split hidden, go out of solo modes, turn everything else back on. If you accidentally touch that dynamic thing, all that does is when you're in dynamic solo, when you're tumbling, it'll turn off all your other subtools for performance reasons. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. All right, guys, is that it? Am I done boring everybody? I mean, no, the rest of it's gonna be boring too, but a different kind of boring. Uh, no, I'm not actually, here's the inside of the mouth. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the side. We're gonna do a top and bottom mouth just cause I can't get enough of multiple subtools. There we go. So bottom mouth, that's got everything I needed. Cool. Cool. Split hidden. All right. I think we're good. All right, everybody, we're right back where we started. Everybody leave. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words, Darius. <laughs> You're beautiful, almost six drunken monks. Um, yeah, this is a very old model. If you want to go back through, I'll also post y'all some links. You can go back through uh, memory lane with me. So here's my art station. If, you, if you're new to ZBrush and you want to, you know, learn the basics, I would say start here. Intro to ZBrush. Just click up here. There's 51 videos in here. So if you're new to ZBrush or you're kind of getting reacclimated, that's a good place to start. And then also in here or on my YouTube channel, uh, all through here, Intro to ZBrush or not Intro to ZBrush. It's on there. You can. There's a couple of them actually. You can also do like Z, uh, ZBrush. What do I call them? In, uh, ZBrush whatever. Whatever the date is. What's new? Usually every year you'll get a new one of those. So check those out. And yes. What was I talking about? I need my brain to come back. It's Thursday. It's I still got plenty of work to do this week. Come on, Mike. Um, oh yeah, memory lane. So way down here at the very bottom. So here's some old <laughs> Ringling digital paintings I did for hey, Thomas Hart Benton. And then over here, there we go. There's my boy and uh, all sorts of really old old ZBrush stuff like back when Z Modeler was new and in beta. That was my beta Z modeler practice. And then, uh, what was this? Nano mesh was new. Oh, remember when nano mesh was new, everybody? And then this was, this was when I was at EA Tiburon. I was doing some of this. And then I even have my very first, oh, let me see. Give me one second. Okay, quick save. Let me see, uh, this might be a, another atrocity as far as ZBrush organization is concerned, but I'll load them up. I got them in my archive now. Oh, or do I? Okay, you know what? I'm going to have that downloading. I forgot I copied everything up. Um, <laughs> entertain yourselves here. And then we want to do files. Nope. Where is everything? Why can't I find anything? Archives. Jeez. DC Universe Online, the very first model I did for DC Universe Online, I believe was Metallo. And looking back, I don't know if they did that. ZBR, Z Material. Oh yeah, I saved materials back then. Download. Oh, okay, it's right there, boom. No problemo. Okay, we're done. Show in folder. And looking back, what, what a thing to put on somebody who just started and this was our Z, so this is 10, 15 years ago. Um, okay, auto save all you want. Let's go ahead and turn our poly paint off here. And this was before 
well before, oh man, that scales off. This was before Z Modeler. This was before, I think you had like the flatten brush. <laughs> uh, yeah, look at that. That was my first Z brush. It was a very Z brush centric pipeline. Um, you know what we're gonna do one day is we're gonna, we're gonna do this right. We're gonna go in here. What is this? What is this? All sculpted detail. At least I have separate sub tools. That's that's a step in the right direction, Mike. <laughs> oh my God! Eyeball is. Oh no! Oh no! Everybody look! Everybody look and point and laugh at infant path. Infant Pav Mike. He was just a baby. He didn't know what he was doing. Oh, these are nice. <laughs> oh, that's funny. These are, hmm. Yikes. Anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah, we can clean that up. We can do a better job nowadays. Let's go ahead and delete all out of our scene. All right, so. Uh, yeah, so we got our Rancor here. Now, again, I have plenty of detail on here. I have a copy saved off. So if I do want to grab these details again, uh, or reproject the details again, so I'm going to be a little bit fast and loose as we're going through here. So I'm going to go ahead and alt tap. You know what? I like to start with the face. Just give me that face. And let's go ahead and let's do a close holes operation. Well, first thing I'm going to do, you see, I got a little stragglers out here. So control shift, grab a little tiny piece of it, control shift a, and then geometry, modified topology, delete hidden. And I'll clean up some of those stragglers. And then I'm going to do again, a uh, geometry, modified topology, close holes operation. And it's not mirrored. It's not a mirrored operation. If you look at that. So again, geometry, modified topology, mirror. Ooh, this is mirrored anyways, mirror and weld. And I'll be doing that as I move through. So let's go and turn off line. So there's our poly group. So now if I want to mess with these individually, because if I dynamesh this right now, it would give me a nasty result. So I'm going to go ahead and control shift tap this poly group here and do an auto groups. And then again, just another quick mirror and weld just in case. And now I can go through here individually and I can control tap, hit W, control tap this purple one, and then go in here with your move brush. Um, and alternatively, you could also just use your move brush with auto masking and then you could do, I have Alt F assigned to back face mask so I don't have to go in here and look at it. I have a little visual indication that it's on. So I'm ever like, why is this brush acting weird? I can look over here and go, oh, back face mask, Alt F. So if you can turn this on and then you can just kind of pull these back. Now on hard surfacey type things, W and then control tapping this can also allow you to control drag out an edge ring uh, if you ever needed to. Let's go ahead and, yeah, it's fine. Pull this in a little bit and just to give yourself a little little breathing room around there. And then same thing on the inside of the mouth. Uh, since I'm putting an upper and lower interior mouth on this guy, <clears throat> or girl, do Rancor females? Let's look that up. I don't know if there is a difference. Oh, there are bull Rancors, of course. Um, adolescent female. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Populated the planet Felucia. Oh yeah, there is. I don't know the difference though. So if we go through here and you hold down Control. And then you can just, again, pull back uh, an edge ring. Let's do maybe multiple. Hmm. That's the best way to do this, because I'm actually kind of creating a mouth bag in and of itself. So here I'm going to go back a little bit. And then I'm going to scale this in. I'm going to turn out X symmetry and then put this in the middle and then turn X symmetry back on. And I'm going to scale this in just a little bit. And then control drag out. Again, for another edge ring, and then scale up and back out, and then control drag back again, and again, just keep scaling up, Oops. scaling those two directions. And then we're, we're poking through the head here, so I'm gonna keep making sure this moves kind of back and up. And now I'm just gonna grab my move brush and just pull. Another thing you could do when you're moving just those parts 
Am I moving this those parts? No, I have back face masking turned on. Um, another thing you can do when you just want to pull these back is turn mask by poly groups up to 100, and then just whatever that first poly group you touch, it will go ahead and mask. What I'm going to do, I need a little more breathing room for that here. So I'm going to keep mask by poly groups up on 100, and I'm going to make sure I can just pull this one poly group back. That'll keep it masked for me. So I'm going to pull this back and kind of bulge this into his body. So we got plenty of wiggle room for the inside of this here. And we're going to test this. Go out of solo mode. We'll turn everything. Oh, nope. Turn everything back on. Uh, these are visual subtool things you can use as well. Um, there we go. So I'm going to hold down Shift, put that at the top. Alt Tap, Shift, put that at the top. And then just grab his head. And again, I just want to look at these three here. And just so I know where they are, I'm going to go ahead and turn on Poly Paint for the mouth. Just so I have a little bit easier time making sure that I'm... And we'll go ahead and turn off mass by polygroups. So I'm trying to get the tedious stuff out of the way first. I know it's tedious, believe me. I'm doing it. But all necessary to make sure I have watertight meshes. I don't like working on single-sided meshes or anything. Anything weird going on. If I have a DynaMesh, I want to make sure it's a, a competent DynaMesh, if I can. All right, good. And then we'll just keep pulling this all back and up so it's out of the way of our interior mouth eventually. And I could, I might have end up actually using this geometry for the new mouth interior. There's no reason not to if I can get it decent. Um, I'm just making sure enough wiggle room in here so if I want to do whatever I want to okay so uh, now we haven't dynameshed at all so far and I think we're in good shape too so let's go ahead and let's hit I guess we can go ahead and keep these polygroups are not hurting anybody let's go through here and say turn this down oh gosh one more thing I got to do let's do a quick because the scale we're at oh no the scales fine uh, if I needed to, I could go in here to Z plugin, make sure everything's unmasked. So Z plugin, clean tool utility, like unmask off, show hidden all, make sure everything's nice and clean. In fact, we let's do this. Let's delete all our, excuse me, delete all our UVs. We've already deleted all our morphs. Let's go ahead and delete all the layers that I don't think we have any. Um, delete UVs. Okay, so I think we're better. Uh, you could do all that and then go in here to Z plugin scale master. And then hit that uh, set ZBrush scale unify. And then I'll go ahead and make sure it's all compatible with ZBrush's scale. All right, so we'll turn these poly paints off. And again, just shift to touch those paint brushes, and then we'll turn that off. Okay, so we got this. Um, and again, we can always grab that detail back from that original subtool we have. And the reason I'm not like control clicking this one and then. I guess I could. You can control click this one and then DynaMesh and then Zero Mesh and then get whatever, whatever you need back. But I don't think I can, I think I can just do that from the history. I can do it from the history in here, but eh, we're fine. So uh, let's go ahead and DynaMesh this. So again, blur down. If I DynaMesh this now as is, it's gonna be fairly low res, um, but really all I'm looking for is like an envelope. So low res isn't a deal breaker. I just want it to be relatively, High res enough to where I can do some work. Okay, there we go. And then again, just a little bit more cleanup. So we have Xmeter turned on. I'm going through here and making sure I don't have any. If you have any weird stuff like this, hold down Shift, turn on Sculptors Pro, and you can kind of chew away at that. And then just rerun your DynaMesh, do a quick mirror and weld, and just keep chewing away. And you can turn that on and off as needed. And again, these are getting real thin, which I don't like. So I'm gonna go ahead and fatten these up by inflating, just use the inflate brush. And yeah, I don't like this either. So this whole tooth cavity in here, uh, we don't need an actual cavity behind there. We can always replace that. And all this in here, I'm just gonna go through and inflate just to keep things, especially if I wanna make this water tight later, having a bunch of little cavities in here is not gonna help. 
So you got this again. And you know what? Let's do, I'm going to do one big push. So W, control, tap that poly group. I'm going to get in here with my move brush. Mask with poly groups is down to zero because I'm just using masking now. Visual masking. And one last push. And I'm going to use this as my mouth bag, actually. I'm going to get delete that interior mouth. We'll just recreate that because that had holes in it and it was going to be a pain to do. Bingo, boingo, shift, smooth, Sculptors Pro. Again, if you want to just kind of chew away detail, Sculptors Pro is a good one to do that with a larger brush size. Just kind of chew away any weirdo stuff you have. Uh, make sure that if you hold down shift and you're going through a thin wall, you're not chewing away stuff unintentionally. And then just around this edge here. Again, we're not really losing much detail that we can't recreate or clean up at the end of the day. So I think we're in good shape. So control drag, again, we're just creating an envelope. And again, if we go back here and we have our eyeball in there now, we don't need an eyeball sitting in here. So I'm gonna take my clay brush and we'll just kind of push this back out of the way. Okay, I think we've got a pretty decent envelope uh, for a head sitting here. So the thing is, is I could go through here and do this for all of them. Uh, but I think I've got some decent natural seam lines right where I'm at. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to kind of the end, which is like, hey, I've got everything figured out. I've gone through here and sculpted. I'm not doing anything major like, I don't know, going through here and like, you know, BSH and doing anything like this with my geometry. It's going to stay within this. So let's go ahead and zero mesh this and project our detail back. So we have Xymetry turned on. Um, we do have poly groups. Should we use those to our advantage? Actually, let's do this. Um, this poly group is fine. Uh, if you want to clean this poly group up manually, you can hold down shift. It, it's in it's in your comma key underneath brush and smooth. You can go grab it. But since I have my brush menu op open all the time, usually, hold down shift, smooth brush modifier, sw switch this to six, which is groups. And then you can literally go through here and just smooth out your groups. Or, uh, you can go through here and you can do a masking, a mask by poly groups, control tab to invert that, deformation polished by features, I like to do an open circle and tap just to kind of smooth that out and that way we don't have to have the smooth option turned on when we see remesh. Uh, this one here, I'm going to go ahead and say U and U, control W to make that all one poly group because this interior is going to turn off a line. And we'll go to skin shader four so you can see a little bit better. Um, it's not quite doing it for me. So clean up, clean up, make sure there's nothing super ugly. Redynamesh if I need to, even though I gotta clean those up again uh, since I did that. Every time you redynamesh, it reprojects your mesh so you'll get that aliasing back, but you guys know how easy it is now. And I also have weighted smooth mode set to one by default usually, so remember to set that back. That's smooth stronger. Okay, so. If I am going to be zero meshing this and I want a little little bit of control, I don't need a ton. There are, there are videos on like, I don't know what they would be called. Look for Leprechaun. On my YouTube channel, search for Leprechaun. And hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. What? Control W. Lime green. Okay. Uh, again, going through here and masking. If you can even hold down control and turn off, turn on back face masking for your mask brush, so you just so you don't grab anything unintentionally. Uh, that your if your camera can't see it, your brush can't see it. If you have that option turned on, which is nice. And we can even once we get this border done, we can go okay. You know what? You are a poly group. Isolate the green one, do an auto groups, and then I'll take anything that's not vert welded and put it into its own poly group. So that'll just be a little bit faster to say you. U, control W, and we're done. So I don't have to go and mask the inside of there. Um, if I do want to clean this up, here's one thing you can kind of do. Let's turn our lines back on. You can go through here, you can hold down with Z Model Brush BZM, hold down Alt, and then tap Shift to inherit that poly group, and you can literally just go in here and paint specific poly groups to kind of get you back on track. There we go. But we don't need to be that safe. Okay, so we have an inside mouth and an outside mouth. And then if I'm going to split those off and I want to do a top and a bottom, yeah, I can use that to my advantage. Okay, anything weird? Anything stupid? I think we're good. So we have our 
Uh, and again, you can go in here to Geometry, Z Remesher, and you can say uh, Keep Groups, which we want to do, and Smooth Groups is up to one. I don't like using Smooth Groups because it just tends to... I don't. I want. I want total control. So we're going to turn off the line here, and we're going to go down here to masking, mask by groups, and you can even go through here and you can grow that mask once. Control tap to invert, just to give yourself a little more wiggle room around those lines. And now we've smoothed them. Yeah, let's smooth them some more. Deformation polish by features. There we go. Nice and smooth. X symmetry turned on. Um, yeah, and we'll go. We'll, we'll project back. Uh, just while we're talking about it, if you wanted to say like this is as far as you took your your model, you can again control control tap the latest point in history, and then go ahead and uh, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, zero measure target polygon count of five. We'll try that, and then adapt to size. The lower you go, the more even quads you'll get. The higher you go, the more it builds in like skin direction changes. So we'll put it not down to zero, but down ish. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn Dynamesh off as well, and then we'll hit Zero Mesher. And I'll get caught up. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm a little bit behind. Um, uh, I'm doing good, Birdie, thanks. Not too bad. It's a little cold here in Texas, but it happens every once in a while. Cool, yeah. Take notes. If you're going back through videos, I, I take notes on all, I mean, tons of notes. It helps cement it in my brain. And then I, if, I, if I ever have to leave the program for a bit and then come back, I can get acclimated a little bit faster. Uh, zero measure with topology or zero measure with guide brush? Um, I, I don't ever use a zero measure with guide brush. So I do zero measure, um, or the topology brush. Topology brush I'll use sometimes for certain things. But what I do with Ziri Mesh is basically just make sure I have polygroups where I want them, and then it Ziri Meshes. So I think we did a pretty decent job. I stored those points in history, and I can go through here and say Project History. That's under Subtool Project. And in fact, let's try to go like half. Get this thing low. Project History. Anything weird going on I need to worry about? I think we're in good shape. So here is my new topology. I think, I think that'll work for what we need. Nothing's really jumping out of me. I'm not. I'm not in love with some of this stuff. Let's hold down Shift and turn down our Z intensity a bit. I'm not in love with some of this here. Uh, if you if you wanted to, you could go through and rebuild some of this while it's just a low res, right? So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to grab my. I have a ZM topology or slice brush, so we can go through here and we can start, you know, go through and cut across here. And let's turn. This is a terrible material for showing stuff. Um, and then we'll just slice across here and then I'm going to go back in here and we'll just say delete. Let's do a quick mirror, mirror and weld, deformation mirror, geometry modified topology mirror and weld. And uh, let's kind of clean this up a little bit. And we'll just do an uncrease all because we don't really need our creases. So that way, again, if you're getting like, eh, that's not, I mean, even this isn't great. It's got a pretty nasty triangle right in a pretty important spot maybe. Um, you know, and we could we could cut this triangle straight up and fix it, but I think we'll be okay. I don't think that's going to be a deal breaker for us. And then if you wanted to cut around the eyes, if you wanted the polygroup to go around the eye bags, you could go in here and just control drag and make sure those are all drawn on there. And as well as you can also do it by, um, you know, it might have been better. Yeah, let's do that. Might as well talk about it, right? So we've got polygroups where we want them, which is neat. But we can also use that to our advantage. So if I turn off polyframe here, there you see we don't really well, do we have a poly, we don't have a polypaint on this. If you ever dynamesh with polypaint off, it just kills your polypaint. So no polypaint on this, but we can go in here to zero mesh and we can say, you know what? Let's use polypaint and our color density, we're gonna go ahead and set that to 2x. So Everything's going to be this kind of pinkish color, but it's not applied to my verts. So if I go over here and move this around, it's just going to take that color. So again, we're going to set this color density to 2. And I'm going to hold down, let's do Control-Alt-F, which is my hotkey for color fill object. And then I'm going to hold down Control-Shift, Control-Shift-Tap. And I'm going to say color density of 0.5, so half. And you see it's a light blue. Control Alt F to fill this with blue because I don't need a ton of detail in here and I don't need a ton of detail back here. Now, something's telling me 
I am going to need some detail around the lip to inner mouth transition. So this may be a little bit of a, let's do this, control shift tap and then control shift S to shrink. So back here, I don't need any. So we can just go ahead and fill that with the color. But up here, I think I might need a little more detail. So I'm going to go ahead and say, um, get rid of this one and then go back up color density of two fill. So I kept my poly groups, but I got a little bit more color density where I would need it. So let's see if zero mesh tackles this. Okay. And like I said before, if you wanted this to uh, go be very specific, like for eyelids and stuff, which gosh, why not? Let's see if we can't do it. So I'm going to go back through here, hit control W and so, oop. is it giving me? Come on, man. Give me, oh, poly paint. Uh, turn polyframe on. There we go. And then to clean this up, again, smooth with our smooth brush modifiers, weighted smooth mode to six. And we'll just manually clean up this ring right here. Yes. And then we'll grab this one and we'll say, and the more I, the more, uh, that's the word I'm looking for. The more I try to throw it zero measure, it's having to think about a lot and it is very smart, but there's only so much it can do given the information that you give it. So I may be asking for more trouble. We'll see. So control W. Oh, you know what? Uh, I have back face masking turned on. I was like, why isn't it grabbing those? Turn off back face masking. Control Alt Tap to kind of freshen that up. Control W to make it a poly group. We'll go and smooth those poly group borders out. And again, this is just, we're not worried about detail. We're just worried about, uh, this is our envelope here. So concentric rings here. If I wanted to put rings here, I could. I'm not too worried about that. Or the ear hole. All right, so we've got that, and we've also got, if we go in here, turn off polyframe, we've also got this. Um, so this is, the poly paint's gonna control our density. All right, everybody cross your fingers. Um, huh, uh huh, keep groups, use poly paint, zero measure. And for most of the other stuff I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna worry about this. Like the arm is just gonna be one density, and the caps I'm not worried about. Just in the head, we're, we're, we're being a little bit more of a finesse player. Uh, not too bad, not too bad. And then whenever it zero meshes, sometimes it will pick up little stray uh, guys, which, let's see, adapt to size, use poly paint. I guess that's correct. So I'm gonna go through here, I'm gonna do a quick project history, because we still have those points in history, and I'm gonna do half. Because again, when I go low, and I wanna pose this guy out later with Transpose Master, uh, I don't want to have to worry about like, oh, I have a 30 million polygon mesh I'm trying to move around the Transpose Master. That ain't cool. Project history, half. Project history. Um, let's take that adaptive size down just a bit. Project history, and you'll see I'm projecting history every time just to kind of get those verts popped back out to where they need to be. Let's go half. Oh, you know what? <laughs> As I'm going half, it is destroying um, my poly paint every time I zero mesh. So let's fix that real quick. Um, and it should be fast, sorry about that. But that'll, that'll help. So now that I've got it down, let's go through here and I'm gonna say, okay, you, control shift S, okay, wait, first, Use poly paint, color density of two, fill everything. Control Alt, Control, control Alt F is my hotkey for a brush, color fill object. And then here, Control Shift S to shrink, and then color density of 0.5, fill. Actually, you know what? I wanna keep this density. So use poly paint, color density of one should just be white. So we're just gonna fill that. And then we say from that, Control Shift S to shrink, drop down. Cause I don't wanna double, I wanna just half. Fill, fill. So now, lines turned on, zero measure. There we go. I think that might actually work. 
I think we're in good shape. So now any any little stuff you want to fix, if you want to go through here and be like, you know what, these concentric circles aren't working for me. Uh, let's go through here and we'll do a quick bridge two points, U and U and U and U, and then we're just going to go in here and just collapse edge U and U. If you want to hold down Alt and draw and then shift, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, we can just bridge these two points too. I think. Yep. Eh, do we need to cut across here? Do we need to cut across here? I'm not going to be overly worried about it, I don't think. I'm not in love with it. But I don't have to love everything. Collapse edge. Let's do this. Let's go back to my slice. Just real quick, everybody. Just real, give me a second. And then uh, mirror, mirror, and weld. Uncrease all. And it'll say delete you and you. Okay, that's better. All right, so uh, project history. So we can get our DynaMesh details back because we stored that point in history. And then we can go through here and we can subdivide, project history, subdivide, project history, subdivide, project history. So we've got most of our detail back because um, we had those stored in history from this point. So if you want to, we can control tap this point in history and control tap it again just to delete that history. But I can also go back into this Rancor and I can control tap these points in history, go back and now I can do history project. So I'm gonna control shift tap isolate just these top parts here and I'm gonna do a project history to project to those points. And ooh, that was what I was afraid of. Let's grab these here. I'm gonna do control shift S to shrink and then try and do a project history. Oof, it really wants to pull points. Well, we're not we're not defeated yet. I'm gonna turn off X symmetry, B H R history recall, and I can literally go back and grab that's weird. Oh, it was asymmetrical. That's why. So if you like if you like it on one side, just stay on the other side. You can see as I'm doing this, I'm getting a little bit more out of it but I you know I could subdivide again so let's control D to subdivide and then I can go through here and I can go through and use my history recall brush to kind of dial this in the cool thing about history recall is if you decimated this down for like a 3d print and you needed to go and grab just you know it can all be pretty you can decimate down pretty low for most of your model but you just want to go back in and add a little bit more love in uh, certain areas you can use this method you can go back and store in history your original vert positions from your highest highest res and then just kind of pick and choose on a decimated model with history recall with sculptors pro turned on and that'll grab your detail back now part of the part of an issue may be that you can only do it with x symmetry turned off and that's not a deal breaker i'll show you why in just a second because you've got some smart options in zbrush because zbrush it's pretty smart, smarter than me. Um, and I'm not getting any detail that's, a, I'm not appreciating anything I'm pulling in here, so who cares? But if you needed to, uh, good for you. Uh, you can go back and grab it, it's not a deal breaker. Now, one thing you do wanna be careful of is you don't do like this, cause it's camera based. So if you go to the side here and be like, ooh, you're projecting these verts back. Not great, so keep moving your camera around cause you're projecting using your camera angle. And you can smooth if you need to, so you don't warp geometry unintentionally but again i'm not grabbing anything i need so whatever uh anything in the eyeball oh the eyeball was kind of nice let's go ahead and grab that lower lid the eyeball wasn't nice but the, the lid was a little more refined than we had it and again just a little bit of smooth i'm gonna turn my z intensity and my smooth back up because we're working with high poly again okay so we've got this we've got one side good one side bad I'm going to go down here, um, used to, what I used to do is go down to the lowest and then mask half and then do a deformation smart resim across the x-axis. You'll see these verts are, are locked and then it'll copy over across that axis symmetry um, smart resim. And then you hit uh, D to step up in your subdivision and then just hit smart resim, D, smart resim, D, smart resim, D, 
smart resim. That used to be the safe way to do it. Um, I think you can probably just grab half at the highest and do that. But then you can turn next symmetry back on. And now, everybody, look. <sighs> we have dense geometry around here. We have less dense geometry back here. Uh, it's not drastic. We went from 1 to um, 0.5, so I don't even know that you'll notice it. It goes from like a little bit nicer to a little bit choppier, maybe. Um, you know, and maybe that was worth it, maybe not. But geometry redistribution, folks. Uh, inside of the mouth here, I'm not gaining anything from these things. I don't need to like pull detail back from a couple of crappy lines I made 10 years ago or 15 years ago. So delete that out of here. Delete that out of here. And yeah, we got a head, y'all. And we got our detail projected back. Now, I don't need this point in history anymore, storing data. So just control tap the latest, control tap again. I get nervous when I do that because when I have a long history line, sometimes it'll jump back a few points in history and I won't realize it. So if you need to, you can go in here to edit, delete older, you undo history, and then you'll start out kind of fresh. So at least the history lines will be bigger. Just be careful you don't need that history. So. All right, we got a Rancor head rebuilt. Uh, let's go through here and polish this up a little bit. We got some decent head reference here. Again, yeah, put a little earring in him. Aw, and he's got the little spit. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. All right, and... I wonder if I could lighten these up a little bit. They're a little dark. A little dark here. Yeah, good enough. So, uh, this is all... And he's kind of... You know, now that I look at this... This is actually good. I did this first. So, uh, we got this head here. I'm going to hit W and move this back. Thank you. And... I'm going to hold down. I'm going to go in here to move multiple. Control shift drag, control shift, and grab the select lasso. And we're going to grab all this. And I'm going to move this because he's kind of like, oh, his head's way in. I'm going to move his head uh, out a little bit. And I may even scale it down just a bit. I think that'll be, that gives me a little more breathing room up here. Yeah, that'll be perfect. Or better, I should say. Okay, so now that I've moved this out, uh, and we've done a lot of work, that's something I should have done. Like, one thing I should have done is gone to back immediately and just been like, hey, is everything correct? Because I shouldn't assume that what I did 15 years ago was decent by any stretch. So now what I'm going to have to do is, you know what, I'm going to take this one, shift, down arrow, alt tap, shift, down arrow, uh, grab both of these here. I'm going to go ahead and say merge down because again I had a seam line but I'm going to change all this so just do a quick merge down so control E is my hotkey for merge down that's under your merge menu and if you have overlapping verts and you want to merge and weld at the same time you can have weld turned on uh, or you can go deformation geometry modified topology <laughs> weld points somewhere in my custom menu I have weld there it is weld points now I go ahead and weld any points that are overlapping or within a certain threshold whatever you have dialed in I'm going to do one more close holes, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. And then uh, again, I have access to what I need. Oh, and we have a little straggler out there. So control shift drag over a couple points, control shift A, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then now I can go in here and use my control tap. Oops, turn off move multiple, control tap. And just kind of move these things down. Or you could use back face masking with your move brush or do whatever you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do. So here, here, again, we're just kind of pull, pulling in so we don't have anything too nasty to deal with. And I'm not concerned about detail. You know, I, I, there's all the re, all the things we went over earlier. We can get that detail back. I just need a DynaMesh envelope here with enough detail so I know where my landmarks are. So maybe up a little bit. X symmetry turned on. Hell, I don't even need it that high. Down. There we go. Now we can clean up any of these edges we want. Again, we can turn on Sculptors Pro to kind of chew away any really nasty geometry. Control drag to close any holes it might create. Again, we're just looking for envelopes. OK, 
Okay, I'm watching you auto masking. Uh, yep, yeah, so there we go. So now, if we turn everything else back on, shift, tap. Now I can go through here and I can use like clay build up, turn off Sculptors Pro. Do a quick mirror and weld here. And we're gonna just go in here. It's going to solo mode. I'm just gonna kind of pull this out. So use the move brush or clay build up. And we're gonna do just a little bit more meat around this neck. And if I want to, again, I can grab that detail back from here, but I, again, that, that 15 year old detail, it's not a real deal breaker. So now I've got a little bit more room for a neck to go in here because that's going to be really helpful if I want to go and pose. That's one thing is like when you do a character with no neck, it seems cool. It's really a pain in the ass. So give your character a little bit of wiggle room on the neck area. Just so you're not in hell. Even in here, I might take this down here and we'll make this. Let's go into clay build up. And we'll drop, you know, I'm going to drop this Z subdiv down. We can just add this to our character. And if you're ever like, oh man, I've changed the topology. I thought I was being smart and now I realize I was dumb. You can always just store those points in history, Z remesh, do what you need to do. It only takes a couple seconds, minutes, and uh, you'll be right back where you started with all your details. So don't, don't ever feel like you're trapped or it's like, oh, I can't go back. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. There we go. So now, a little more wiggle room for his head and his neck. Much better. So, Control B. Oh, so we were going to talk about that too. At least I think I was. Um, you know, how how do how would you start this character? He's a real good candidate since he's all one creature. Just to go in here with a Z sphere rig. So let's do a quick save. Let's go out of edit mode. And we switch Control N. Sorry, halfway through we're talking about how to start this guy. So Z sphere edit. Uh, X symmetry turned on, and we're going to go Q, and that's going to draw. If you want to know the basics of all this stuff, remember, uh, back here on my art station page, there's the intro to ZBrush stuff. That'll cover all the basics here, and then on the YouTube channel, same deal. You can, you can look at it. Everything okay? Restream? Yes. Okay. Um, and if you if you're ever saying anything like, what the hell is a Z sphere? type it in in my search and you've got intro to z spheres z spheres and z sketching that's another thing we can do we'll talk about that so uh we got a z sphere here and we're going to go through and just q and you might i mean in the in the z zoo i don't think they are i don't think they would for like legal reasons but you know look in there too if you're starting like with an animal hit the comma key go in here to project there's mannequins and there's z zoo and you can start out with a z sphere animal that you can move stuff around uh, but we're not. I guess you could start with like a gorilla or a rancor, but that's probably a little too specific. So long arms, um, elbows. Let's tilt him forward a little bit so he's a little more balanced. Uh, big head here. And this is really just for volumes. You don't need to be perfect with this. I mean, you can be as perfect as you want to, but this is really all I would be looking for. Maybe scale this tree trunk feet out. So E is scale. Uh, w is move, E and R is rotate if you want to rotate stuff around. So this would be where I would start. And then once you have this, if you hit A for adaptive skin, it's going to look low res, but if you turn on polyframe, you can see it's actually high res. And if you go down with your Z sphere selected with adaptive skin selected, uh, your density is, your dynamesh is set at 256. Turn that off and then turn preview on and off. And you see this is the geometry, turn density down to one, and this is the actual geometry you'll be pulling out. So this is fine, it's a good start, right? As any, and then we're gonna go ahead and say, so under adaptive skin, say make adaptive skin. Uh, you still have your Z-Sphere available to you if you wanna hit A and just keep messing with this, you can. And you can even go in here to Z-Sketch and say edit sketch, and then you've got your sketch brushes now. Make our brush size really small. And you can go through here and you can just start sketching on Z-Spheres, hold down shift to smooth these Z-Spheres. All sorts of stuff you can do. You can even make straight lines with these spheres if I remember how to do that, which I don't think I do. So you can add stuff like this, or uh, if you want to do like tentacles or bug type things, or and or you can go in here and you can make your hands. Um, hands I like to do with primitives usually. So feel free. Now if I hit A now, it's going to give me just my unified skin. So you can do both. Um, and in fact, 
Ugh, I don't want to go into the basics of this. Look it up on my YouTube channel, but you can project this back if you go in here to Z sphere. Uh, is it under? I think it's just under Edit Sketch. You see Show Sketch is turned on. So you go out of Edit Sketch, turn Show Sketch on, and then go back and Edit Sketch, and then hit A. Um, or turn Edit Sketch off, and then hit A, and turn your density up. It'll start picking up your unified skin. Um, if that's useful to you, usually what I'll end up doing is say, you know what, whatever. Um, edit Sketch. Just go show, show sketch it off. So I'm going to have a unified skin here. Unified skin, make unified skin. Um, turn off edit sketch, adaptive skin, make adaptive skin, and then you can just merge those together. So we have our, here's our adaptive skin, X symmetry turned on. You can hit Control D to subdivide, or you can immediately just go in here to Dynamesh. No, don't freeze subdivisions. Never freeze subdivisions on Dynamesh unless you really have a reason to, which is rare. Uh, and then you can say append your skin Z sphere, and then you can just merge these down, control drag, and dynamesh those together. Now, um, if you wanted to work separately, this is a really easy opportunity to do that. So you have your lower arm here, just go ahead and say split hidden, control drag, control drag. And uh, so again, real easy to go through here and be like, yeah, leg separate, split hidden, control drag, uh, body head separate, split hidden, control drag, control drag. So now you've got this guy nice and divided up. And we just hit control W on this one. So now we go through here and say, okay, you know what? Uh, clay buildup or clay brush or Damien standard. And one thing you're going to see, it's, this one's not too bad, but if, you're, if your draw size is like getting capped out here, you can go in here to preferences, edit, uh, draw, move. Preferences, draw, max brush size. You can crank that up or dynamic brush scales and multiplier. What I would do though, is go in here to Z plugin, scale master, hit that ZBrush scene scale unify, that'll drop all your subtools down so that it fits all within a box and now you're back to normal sculpting. So just a really quick and easy way to get you compatible. Even if you bring in an object from another program, it'll that'll maintain your overall scale on export as well. Uh, it'll just make it so that underneath geometry, size, this is about, oh, it's 1.3, but it's about, depending on the bounding box, it'll be about um, two, basically. So here's his little pot belly here, and then here's his head that we need to, and again, it's like, oh, why did you make a Z sphere that was whatever? Just go in here and just move it around, man. You don't need Z spheres to do everything for you. You just need it to give you something. There you go, and Dynamesh. So whatever resolution you want to work on, just go through and start making that guy more detailed. And then once you've done that, you'll be here. All your stuff split out. Uh, probably to this level of detail is all I would go before I started thinking seriously about um, Z remeshing and finishing it out. And again, doesn't really matter how detailed you want to go. Feel free to do what you want. Um, I tend to use Dynamesh just for base mesh purposes up to like secondary maybe hints or indications of tertiary form or details. And then when I want to get really into details, um, I'll swap it out. The other cool thing, if we go back to the head, the other cool thing about having subdivision history and actual geometry not using Dynamesh is that you can go through here on things that absolutely should be overlapping. Um, let's go ahead and smooth this out. Uh, so we get an eyeball here. We got this. I'm going to go through and just use a little bit of clay buildup. So now that this is actual geometry, because if you were to dynamesh something this close together, it would do that kind of sticky thing. Um, what's it called? Sculptures Pro doesn't have that problem, but again, we're not being sketchy. We just have real geometry here. So what you can do now is go through here, and if you want to overlap these, you can mask this side. Control tap to invert that and then literally just kind of pull this geometry down and really get a nice clean dividing line. Also, you can go through here. Uh, so dynamics, everybody knows that. So we go in here to dynamics. If you if you don't know that, I shouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> dynamics. Uh, it's ZBrush 2020. What was that part of? 2021, what's new? This is a monster playlist, but all the new cloth stuff is in here. 
Um, I think I start out with it. So the videos two through a million are about cloth. And one of the re ways I like to use this is so you have dynamics in here and you have gravity. So you can turn this into like, let's do a quick save. Um, you know, you can, <laughs> let's try this. Let's say collision volume, gravity, down. Oh boy. And then run simulation. Oh, oh no. Okay, so this is embarrassing. <laughs> I had such a problem. I don't know why I had such a problem when I was a child. Of uh, let's, let's do all high. Um, of not working with my feet on the ground and Z forward. How easy is that? So we're going to go through here. I'm going to turn off X symmetry. Uh, go to the middle of my character here. Uh, turn X symmetry back on, turn on move multiple, make sure everything's unhashed. And I'm just gonna rotate this 180 degrees this way. So at least he's Z forward. And I'm gonna move him into the middle here. And you know what? It looks like he's also down. Let's just move him so he's up. There we go. Now he's in Z brush space. So W, turn off move multiple and uh silly anyway that's why he went gravity up but so we can go back down to sojourn level one here uh let's just recalculate our collision volume uh and then if now if we go through here and run the simulation that'll just turn his head into cloth and uh that's actually pretty cool i like that a lot uh, but one thing you can do is you can go through here i'm gonna go to sojourn level two and so look up here at your active points because this is going to cap out at 250 simulation points 50,000 simulation points, not 250. Um, those are in thousands. But usually you don't need like 250,000. Like you wouldn't even get close to that. But so now you can go through here with like B, C, brush, cloth, uh, twister. You can twist his head around or brush, cloth. Um, what's one you would actually use? Move, nudge, pinch. I thought there was a brush, cloth, hook. So here's a brush cloth hook here. Um, oh, let's turn off our collision volume because we don't need it to collide. So you can go through here and you can kind of move stuff around. However, uh, you can limit that effect by going in here. If you want to just kind of like slide it over a bony structure, you can go in here to thick skin. Let's turn some of these off here. So geometry, uh, somewhere in here is thick skin. So we're going to turn that on and that you can dictate like how far the influence of any brush you're going to use will go off the character. So now when I use this, it's like pushing skin over the bones of your underlying uh, mesh here. And I don't even do that. So uh, having said all that, I can also go into my pinch brush or my inflate brush. Oh, you can also do that too. So if you want to say maybe inflate and expand your mesh, we'll turn these way down and then run our simulation with gravity off you'll see it'll start just kind of inflating and expanding uh, two different things expand inflate's just going to push along like in a balloon inflate along the surface normal and then expands going to kind of i think it looks at other areas and pushes away from those other verts um, you can also do huh, self collision up here if you wanted to let's try to expand up a little bit so you can see that a little bit better there we go so you can see it's kind of crumpling in on itself. That's how I made Crane Brains a uh, couple, a lot of, um, a lot of live streams back. However, all of these settings you can dial in and apply to a brush. So for instance, I'd use the pinch brush, go down here to brush, turn on elasticity, crank up simulation iterations. So now when I use the pinch brush, you're going to see it's going to behave, um, like the pinch brush, it'll pinch things together, but it'll also have claw simulation built in. Um, and we can have the firmness set too. So now here, if we go up to session level three, this is kind of where I want to be for these, um, for the simulation I'm doing. Uh, but we happen to go above the max points you're allotted. Just control it, like say it was his whole body, just control shift, grab a little piece of it. And then you can go through here and you can use it no problem. That'll keep your max points down. Also you have firmness. So if you set the firmness to like four, it'll keep everything, you know, see how the wrinkles are a little more like leather. Uh, firmness of one will allow you a little more silky. Uh, and since we're in silky, may you may be like, well, he has leathery skin, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on a detailed part of his face. So 
it's actually it's also oh you know what and that that thick skin is also limiting the effect too so if we turn that off actually the thick skin wasn't because i went up a subdivision level i think but um that'll allow you just rough shot over the whole thing so subdivision level four you know so you can go through here and so now it's like oh these these wrinkles are too fine well you can either go back a subdivision level or you can go up in your firmness and that way again you can go through here and really kind of get some of these things going uh, another thing you can do is bc brush contrast so yeah there's delta and target i like to use a little bit of target here so you can go through here and you can just use this to kind of increase the contrast on what you got going on here so if you got something you like and you just want to go through there's also a deformation contrast so you, if you want to do the whole thing or just the masked areas you can make a contrast or smooth it out um, which i suppose is neat anyway a lot of stuff there so now uh moving right along so let's go in here to our damien damn standard o2 brush which you can find on the internet i'm going to go through here and we're going to kind of smooth because we don't really have let's go back down i'm gonna again i i, I prematurely went into z remeshing because i thought hey pav from 15 years ago probably had it going on he probably had all this stuff figured out and everything was perfect and it turns out that was not the case so i'm going to reconfigure based on my new reference here it's a little more uh, spelled out for me so here we've got this we've got a lump it's going to go back and then here we've got another lump it's going to go back and then it's actually going to kind of flatten in this area clay brush clay build up uh, clay buildup, I do have, I want to say like Magdalena, or I think a couple of people have it set to this, but clay buildup, Z intensity way down, and then underneath stroke um, modifiers, there's a roll distance and crank that up, and then I'll kind of keep things under control. So moving our way back here, uh, smooth is up, and smooth is also set to one that's why i was acting weird not six because that's smooth group and he his ear hole is kind of way back there but i'm not gonna worry too much about that so here and if you had like specific reference you wanted to bring in you could use uh, spotlight um i don't know if i'm gonna get that specific but here's that the big wrinkle from the top of his head here and you know what, now that we're getting towards, um, so there's the first initial lump, and then this kind of comes down here. I wonder what I, if I should do. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do, everybody. It's gonna make everybody sad, but I think it's worth it. Now, again, we can get our detail back if we want to, but all that work we did, we're just gonna destroy. Don't be afraid. Move this up to the top. Um, it's just above the face here, and I'm going to crank this up just a tiny bit, merge down, dynamesh all this together. And again, we, we know how we can split things up and grab our detail back. Um, not a huge deal. Most What I do on this channel is mostly for instructional purposes, not to actually get anything done, so that's the good news. And I'm just going to go back through here, and I'm going to reconfigure some of this. I'm going to hold down Alt. With our Damien standard brush, we're going to pull out kind of a brow ridge here. Um, I'm going to push this back in just a tiny bit. Maybe go into the clay buildup brush because he's got some really sunken eyeballs on here. Uh, these are a little more meaty. It looks like. So kind of build these up. And you can also turn on back face masking as well. Let's go move these out here. And then right along the back here. So we've got this here. And then this is the brow that goes back. And then again, we got a big lump. I'm trying to think also if there's like anything in particular I need to be thinking about for um, like any underlying structure or bones that I make sure I keep into account or keep in the back of my head so I'm not moving things unintentionally. And I'm not on a Rancor uh, anatomy specialist, obviously, or an anatomy specialist for anything. But 
you can make it's it's humanoid you know it's it's certainly got some interesting things going on with the head but the rest of the body is vaguely humanoids mixed with a rhinoceros it looks like so you can definitely get some decent reference there and then uh, again we'll say Damien standard alt and kind of pull up here and then grab our clay build up brush and we'll just kind of use that as a, a ledge to kind of pop out that bony outcropping here and then this will all come in and this kind of gets smoothish through here and then right through here so this kind of has just has a bony ridge so when it closes its mouth you know, you got this kind of bony ridge, and then it's got that smoother part, and then another bony ridge. So when it closes its mouth, this skin will kind of fold in and give you that kind of look. Cool. So here, here. All right, it's feeling a little bit better. And let's go to the back here. So. Um, if we were going to say this is like totally humanoid, you'd be like, okay, where's this, where's this traps here? And there's his vert, vertebrae, dig that in. And then he's going to have some lats and then his, uh, scapula and then his terrace major and for spinatus terrace minor. And these lats would kind of come down here. And then he's got his obliques. And, and that's not honestly a bad way to probably start, just so you can kind of get an, a, get a feel for like, are, are, is there enough stuff to move around here? Not that you initially have to spell out his shoulder blades or anything, um, because he's got some big leathery skin and a bunch of like bony outcroppings and, outcropping and stuff. Um, and I guess maybe the bad thing about doing something like this would be you may be more inclined to be like, well, if I'm building in leathery skin, let me just kind of follow what I've got here. And then he ends up being, you know, kind of like a, I don't know, a Bruce Lee um, rancor. But uh, it, it is just kind of a way to find some bony landmarks. So you have an idea with it kind of helps with proportion a little bit. It kind of makes me feel like his shoulders are a little close, but honestly, I think he kind of does have, he's, he's kind of a hunchy shoulder kind of dude. So that's fine. Uh, but on the actual here, at least according to this reference, uh, this is again, big bony outcropping here. So we'll go ahead and just sculpt this up. And then right down here, it looks like we'll take our Damien standard brush and we'll kind of just go across here. Kind of interesting. He's kind of got like a little bug back. So we're going to go in here. Uh, if we need a little more room to wiggle around, we can just get rid of the arms. Just go into solo mode here. And this will be a skin, kind of transition to a skin fold here, and maybe a skin fold here. And then all along his back here. In fact, goodness, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this one here, move it down underneath merge down dynamesh together sorry uh, and then we're going to go back through here because again we haven't figured everything out just yet so again premature on my part i apologize and then we also need to add a little tail on here so alt e m or go into your primitive brush there we're going to say split mass points now this i am going to keep separate if we want to put detail on here that's totally fine um Let's do, go ahead and do a quick bend curve resolution. So now with this one, you can go through here and you can, I guess we need X so much to turn on, but uh, you can scale this down. You can twist if you need to, um, but I think that'll work. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold down shift and smooth that just a bit. Control drag the Dynamesh, that'll inherit the Dynamesh properties on our original mesh here. And now we have a placeholder for, let's do a quick mirror and weld, turn on X symmetry, and we're off to the races. So this will all be bony plates. So we'll, we'll kind of indicate really quickly, like 
Remember those things in Star Trek that crawled in your ear and took over your brain? Check off. Uh, it was a Rathacon, I think. That's what this back reminds me of. I think about that creature a lot. Probably one of the more disturbing moments when I was a child. So we'll go through here. We'll kind of build this up. And then again, looking at the whole silhouette, you want to make sure it's, I, don't know, I guess, making sense here. And again, this whole, this whole back section here will be plates. Um, I guess we'll do Damien Standard with the Alt brush held down, and you can just very quickly kind of go through here. And given, given the way I am now, I would probably go through here and literally separate out every single one of these plates just because I want complete access and control over all these plates. Um, I don't know, we'll play it by ear. And then I guess they kind of stop it as obliques. I'm, on the front side, I'm not seeing much. Some, somewhere around here, we'll transition here and then this will be, we'll just continue that. We got, we got plenty of natural seam lines on this guy if we need to. And then I'm gonna go back in here with my clay brush so it kind of looks inverted. I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna build up on the top side of the plates here real quick. And then I'm going to push back underneath. And this one, let's try Dam Standard 02, not the regular Damien Standard, because that'll kind of go through and kind of push in and, and inflate at the same time. So that give me a little more separation if I need to go through. And these are a little thicker than they need to be. You can go back in with your pinch brush and fix that. But again, just working fast. And then if you need to, you can also go in here with your move accu. Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to pinch down just a little. Ooh, we still have <laughs> simulation durations on with our pinch brush. We can turn that off. So go back through here and we'll pinch this and then also go back in with our move accu brush. We can kind of go and undulate these just a bit, kind of pull to points. And move accu, I'm oh, sorry, it's just a move brush with um, curve, accu curve turned on. All right, let me have some coffee and get caught back up again. Um, and again, if I miss some, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I haven't really been looking over here. Uh, yes, adaptive size will increase your target polygon count. Good point. Um, the lower that adaptive size is, the closer it'll get to your poly count. The higher it is, the more it's going to be like, well, I'll try to hit that poly count, but I'm going to blow right past it. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, so let's see. Um, Oh wow, yeah, go on, I've, I've been going on eBay. <gasps> you guys, y'all can help me. Um, Twitter. Me. Me on Twitter. This guy. What did he go to? He looks Star Wars. What, what was he? I can't find him. <sighs> So get a good look, commit it to memory, and then let me know. <laughs> oh, I'm like, awesome. That's good to hear, Michael Dot, that, uh, you know, just kind of listening along to my whatever I'm doing is okay. Um, sub tool with subdivision. I can't alt tab out of it. It says because of the layer, so I have to use the sub, uh, sub tool with subdivisions. Oh, yeah, sometimes it'll be, I get the same thing when I have morph target or with morph brush and you try to alt tap over and it's like, hey, you have to have a morph target to use this or it'll throw up a little message. Um, that's a good point. 
That's why I never use layers. <laughs> uh, getting caught up, getting caught up. Rotate the tool and have subdivisions do virtual switch to lower some visible navigating. How can I stop it from doing that? Uh, that I'm not sure. But you're right, it does do that. Um, you can delete lower and then uh, it won't have any subdivisions to... Uh, maybe it's under... it might be under preferences. Maybe. Hmm, I'm not sure about that one. Hey Daniels, thanks for showing up. No problem, Manu. Glad the videos are helping. Um, and re if you wanted to really retopologize this, like for real, um, oh, well, a lot of the details would end up just being probably maybe displacement, and then you could it wouldn't be too bad. Just manually go through, and you could start with the areas that are important, like the eyes and the mouth, and then build back from there, and then the areas that are important around the neck rings. Get your important rings first, and then connect between the rings. Clean up any geometry. Try to make them as many quads as you can for predictable deformation, and then you're good to go. It might be tedious in some areas, but or you can just zero mesh it and call it a day depending on what your final result needs to be for um, uh, normal mirror and mirror and weld yeah mirror is just it just like a uh, blitzkrieg says uh, mirror just flips your geometry mirror and weld takes the negative x and mirrors it and welds it to the positive x um subdivide around um Let's see, do, 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 uh, adaptive size come on top of the car. Yep, it does. Cool. Yes, Nizumi, thank you. Uh, preferences, performance, slider, Q threshold, thank you. Okay, so, uh, preferences, performance, Q transition threshold, quick transform transition threshold. Lose performance, high resolution when you're... Okay, there it is. Thank you, Nizumi. You win. You win Thursday, the 3rd. <laughs> uh, want to teach my grandma ZBrush. Any advice? You know what? Grandma, it's interesting. The the peep, if, you know, not to say your grandma doesn't know what a computer is, but, you know, mine doesn't. It's basically... They, if you, if they're not really, they don't do like, the hardest people to transition to ZBrush I've found is our, our modular set builders in 3D Studio Max. Those people transitioning to ZBrush have the hardest time. Uh, the people who have the easiest time generally are people who don't even know what a computer is. And you can show them ZBrush and show them how it works and they're like, oh, okay, boop, 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 no problem. They don't bring a lot of, a lot of baggage with them. So for better, for worse. But uh, grandma would actually be an interesting I'd like to see that. That would be interesting. Um, I think she could do it. Totally. Uh, any ways to Dynamesh without baking? Dynamesh without baking sculpt layers? No, because when your layers require, it's like a it's like a morph target. It requires vertex history. It requires the vertex count and as soon as you change that vertex count which dynamesh obviously does it blows away any of that so in that case instead of using layers and you want to dynamesh i would just store a point in history control tap that point in history where those vert positions are uh dynamesh as much as you need and then if you need to get those vert positions back project history so no layers what's up tony from france um Dang, Scott, I didn't give me your link. Importing a mesh from other software. Scale master unify will it keep the correct scale when exporting back. Do you have to readjust? It should. So that's the cool thing is if you bring in an imported model and then you say zebra scale unify, all it's going to change is this export setting right here. So when it exports, you know, you hit, you hit, it has an export setting when you bring it in, a certain scale value. And then if you hit zebra scale unify, it'll change this export scale value. So it'll make it ZBrush specific it'll make it zbrush compatible and then export it at a different at a different scale so it's compatible with whatever you had originally it should um end to end character creation using zbrush and then a three topologizing and texturing um yeah i'm sure there are some out there i don't really pay too much of attention to that i do have probably the closest thing i have is an older one this well the, the mechanical skull series does it's not a whole character but it'll take you through the entire process uh and then this Ooh, creature production uh, has end to end. It's but it's a creature, so I don't know. And it's also old AF. But either of those, I go through it just off the top of my head. 
Um, size units, I'm not destroying that. Weird stuff happens. Uh, go Z, export setting, crash, reload, set up tools. It can also mess stuff up. But yeah, it can get a little bit. I haven't had too many problems with it. I mean, I used to way back in the day, back like ZBrush 3.5. I had to juggle a lot of stuff, but nowadays it's pretty much set and forget it for a scale. Um, top 10 mistakes <laughs> in ZBrush. I need to do, uh, I don't know, once I get more time. I always say that. When am I going to get more time? Does that ever happen? Uh, mm. Thank you, GM. Glad the videos are helping and ZBrush books are cool, except man, they go out of date real fast. Anything in the software sector, uh, stuff that's evergreen, like design fundamentals. Those are usually I'll buy a book or anatomy. I'll buy books. But when it comes to like software, man, those books end up just taking up space after like six months, <laughs> everything gets updated and changed. Uh, how do you make those wrinkles in the arms uh, that I see everywhere? Okay, l let's talk about that a little bit. Um, do you keep dynameshing your character until you're done, or do you stop at a certain point? Usually when I'm dynameshing, I'll stop. You know what? I may stop when the dynameshing when it looks maybe like this at, a, at an extreme. Uh, but generally speaking, I'll stop dynameshing a little higher resolution than this. So we'll, I'll get my primary and secondary forms kind of dialed in. And then, um, so speaking of, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to scooch this over just a tad here, and we're going to transition this a little bit better. So we have this. I'm going to take this and kind of scooch. Let's go ahead and just Dynamesh this. Resolution up a little bit. Dynamesh. Mirror and weld. I always got to do a quick mirror and weld. And if you're mirroring welding across an axis, um, like two separate objects. Just make sure you don't have L-SIM turned on, which is useful in some instances, not when you're mirroring welding across the X-axis. Um, so we got this, and then we're gonna transition this a little bit better. So I'm gonna take this here, I'm gonna smooth it out. Um, so arm wrinkles, let's go ahead and Dynamesh this here. And then again, quick mirror and weld. And in fact, one thing you can do, if you're only gonna work on one side, you can say, turn off X-Symmetry. And uh, I generally work on this side here. Um, I don't know how useful this is, but for like boots, sometimes it is. So I can say delete hidden, and then we're just working on this side, right? We just have one object. You can go in here to array mesh, turn on array mesh, lock position, lock size, reset mirror, X mirror. And then now when you're sculpting on this side, this side will update and you'll be able to do stuff like clip across. No problem because this doesn't actually exist. It's an instance. So that way, that's interesting. And if you're over in here and you're like, ah, get out of my damn way, I just turn array mesh off. So I don't know if that's useful to you, but then I can just go ahead and make mesh. Now we have an actual mesh over there and we're back where we started. So shift, Sculptors Pro, kill those little wrinkly things. So let's go ahead and get this up to speed. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm going to, that's kind of a weird divot. Let's go ahead and turn off Sculptors Pro. We'll kind of fix this anatomy just a little bit. So we've got this, we got some big, thick, solid bones and some of that um, rhino musculature in here. A little bit better. And again, if it helps to dial in like the stuff you know and you're, it's just a humanoid and you wanna put in your triceps and stuff, you can start there. And it may, like I said, it may help you a little bit with proportion. Let's go ahead and fix this here. There we go. Um, clay brush, clay buildup, low intensity. Um, let's see. And also proportions and stuff too, because man, he's got some long arms. I guess those are okay. And I'll go ahead and let's take our standard brush crank that Z intensity up, crank our lazy radius up, and then tap L to turn it off. Because if I want lazy radius, I want it on. And if I don't want lazy radius on, I want it off. And you can tap L to turn it on and off. So here we have our Rancor arm here. And again, clay build up to kind of go through and kind of dial in, just kind of cutting across. Let's turn down our Z intensity on our smooth, stronger brush just a tiny bit. And go through here and make sure everything's in there. So we're going to talk about uh, wrinkles. It's actually been a it's been a 
a while since I made a creature creature. Is that true? I think so. Damien standard brush if you want to go through. Again, you can kind of mimic like, oh, there's there's like a tricep maybe in here. And then there's the lower head of that tricep three heads. And then in here could be the, what is that? Medial epicondyle of the humerus maybe. And then out here, you know, here's your ridge muscle tucking in between your, where's my anatomy model? There it is. Turn. Oh, don't knock that off. There we go. Okay. Keeps me honest. Yep. And, yep. Mm-hmm. And, yep. And on the back here, this little divot right in here, just like on this inside here is your medial inside towards the middle of your body and then lateral here and then you have muscles kind of tucking in there and ligaments and they'll kind of cur curve around and attach to the thumb which is he has a thumb yay so not a whole lot of guesswork going on in here and then he's got his extensors on the back and then his flexors and again, this is mostly for volume and proportion. Not that his proportions are super humanoid in the arm area. Oh, they are. They're just kind of scaled relative to his other stuff. And then along the back here, we've got... I forgot what this one was called. There's a little muscle that kind of... Scott Eaton called it the grocery carrying muscle. Uh, carrying the bags kind of rotates here. And then through here, and then again, the flexors on the inside. So, uh, and again, we don't even have to get that detailed because he doesn't, it's going to have big leathery skin over it. It's just a way for me to kind of orient myself and make sure my volumes are generally correct before I start adding a bunch of leathery skin on top. And I've got a couple of Rancor references, and some of them have just big, thick tube arms, and some of them have a little more going on. So I'm kind of doing just kind of a medium between here. So we got this going. And so this would be basically like a volume block out. This is bothering me here. Move brush. You know, one thing we could bring in, we'll do it when we do the legs. Okay, so we got this and we're gonna dynamesh. And then if I get, if I wanna give little indications of where skin wrinkles are gonna go or overlapping, usually thinking in terms of like, what are my primary volumes and folds gonna be before I start thinking about secondary stuff. So, um, so like back here, First primary is overall volume, and it's going to be nice and fat and tubular along the back, just a big encasing of leathery skin. So we can that's that's a primary form. And on top of that is going to be, and again, kind of maybe going in with your Damien standard and just indicating, you know, these big kind of here's another thing too. So if you want it to kind of sag down while you're sculpting underneath your brush here, I think there's under Oh boy, it's been, again, it's been so long since I've gone in here. Uh, gravity. Surface. No. Um, think. Gravity strength. <laughs> Under depth. <laughs> uh, so you can crank that gravity strength up. So now, then that arrow is going to point in the direction. You can even point it at yourself if you want to, towards the camera. But the gravity, as you're sculpting, oh. It'll kind of pull down as you go. Um, but of course you can also use, instead of that, you can also use uh, dynamics. When we talked about dynamics earlier, you can use the same thing. So we got some 
wrinkles across here. And again, these are the bigger primary ones. So big old primary honking wrinkles along his elbow here. And then up here is going to be a little bit less, you know, and again, this is, we got to get our volumes correct first. So use your clay buildup brush, your clay brush, standard brush, Damien standard brush, whatever. And then as we go to the side here, um, you know, again, make sure your primary volumes are correct. He doesn't, he doesn't have like, you can, you can give kind of indications depending on how thick that skin is. You can kind of let a little of that musculature breathe through, but I always tend to overdo it. I don't trust myself. So trust yourself. Don't be like me. When you're watching my videos and my instructional stuff, always keep in the back of your head, don't be like this guy. Be cooler. So, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, okay, okay. And then just a quick uh, smooth brush pass here. And then, if again, if you want to kind of go back in and use your Damien Standard brush or Herb, Orbs Cracks or Damien Standard 2, all of those I have available pretty quickly. So here's Orbs Cracks, here's Dam Standard 02, and this is kind of like a cut in and an inflate. So if I want to do some serious damage, I'll go in with this one and you can you can use a feather touch with this one you don't have to go nuts with it but uh, very quickly you can kind of go through and you can start putting in those major wrinkles so damn standard o2 uh, big big wrinkles through here and then uh, another thing too when you start getting into from the primary it's still skin direction and skin fold direction um, but you definitely, especially around the head, we can probably have a little bit more fun there. Well, this is fun too. Um, which direction those skin folds are all going here? So again, primary skin fold direction, and it's you know kind of crisscrossing over. And we're starting already to kind of run out of resolution. So this, if you're not going nuts and you're not changing, you know, anything major on here, you could probably get away with like Ziri meshing this. He does have some bony stuff coming out of here. So let's go to BSH, snake hook brush, and we can kind of just kind of pull out. In fact, if you hold down Alt while you pull, man, it's the move brush. Go into your move brush and then start pulling out and then hold down Alt. It'll pull directly out of that surface normal. So that may come in handy if you just want to kind of go in here. And so if you just use a move brush, it's going to pull in the camera direction, right? But if you hold down Alt, it'll pull straight out from that surface normal. So you can kind of quickly go through here and kind of dial in some. Yeah, this is going to bend a lot. So let's keep it more towards the bony areas that aren't going to deform too, too much. It kind of gets smaller as we go through here. And then even on here, you've got a little bit of some, but those could probably just be popped in with an alpha if you wanted to. But also just really quickly with the move brush, alt. Just hold down alt while you pull. And uh, then you can go back in here if you need to give these a little more personality. Personality goes a long way. You can kind of straddle these up or whatever. So now if we dyna mesh this and then we ziri mesh this th these bones aren't poking through or those horn things aren't poking through like they are up here so i would probably keep them part of the same subtool but then if you ziri mesh this you'd probably be in good shape uh, again i'm prematurely doing this but we're talking about wrinkles so at this point you know we've got we've got everything pretty much dialed in we've got all our volumes dialed in we've got indications of where our detail is going to go we're going through here and we're like you know, big heavy wrinkles across here, and then those will start crisscrossing up into smaller wrinkles eventually here. So Dam Standard or Damien Dam Standard 02 is probably your best bet, I think. And then from here, uh, if you wanted to, yeah, let's just keep and move this up. Okay, that might be a tougher transition, but we're okay. So, control drag to read Dynamesh. Uh, let's go in here to edit 
delete older undo history, control tap that point in history. I'm gonna do a quick zero mesh, depth size down a bit, and then target plugging account of five is probably fine. And in fact, we could probably just do, that's fine. We have extra matrix on, it'll go fast. Zero mesh. And since we have history stored, remember under geometry project history, and let's just go half. Don't need that much. Project, oops, not project all. Project history. One more time, half. Yeah, not project all, project history. Uh, control D to subdivide, project history. Control D to subdivide, project history. Control D to subdivide, project history. And we're back where we started, give or take. So now I don't need that history stored anymore. Control tap, control tap again. And now that we have subdivision history, we can play around with more like overlapping wrinkles and just refining. So let's see how much um, subdivision I really need. Let's go down to sort of level three. Yeah. So here we're kind of, again, just dialing in um, secondary stuff. And I'm using, I'm over, I'm using those terms loosely. If you want to define those better for your team or whatever, you can, I don't know, you can go nuts. Go nuts in your style guide and get to make sure everybody's using the right vocabulary so the communication is easier. But I'm I'm just saying whatever I want because it's my live stream. And who's going to tell me not to? Not some dumb art director. Not some dumb lead. I run this. So now, we got this here. Here. And I don't need that disparaging way. It is important to communicate effectively. I'm just being flippant. Okay, so... We got this kind of dialed in. Um, so now let's go up one set of vision here to setting level four. And what's interesting is if you have surface direction uh, dialed in, you can go through here again with our pinch brush with our, it might be premature to do this, but we'll give it a shot. We'll go in here to elasticity, um, crank our simulation iteration up again. You don't even have to go up to 100. I just, that's my, what I do first. Uh, and again, if we're over the active point limit, which we're not, but you know, sometimes it's useful to oops, control shift, just narrow it down a little bit. You can go through here and you can kind of enhance what's going on here with a little bit of cloth sim. If it's not firm enough, you can drop the firmness down. If it's too firm, um, you can drop it down. If it's not firm enough, you can, you know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna go through here and you can use this and it's kind of like using a contrast brush, uh, but basically you're just using simulation to kind of go through and help you out kind of find some of these wrinkles. Now it is going to kind of pull because it wants to it wants to maintain those relationships. When you have a towel and you pull it, those relationships between the verts of the towel don't allow you to stretch it because it's a towel. Um, same thing in here. It doesn't want to allow you to just stretch stuff. If you need a little more wiggle room, go in here to expand. So while you're pinching, it'll actually expand out. You know, so that will allow you a little more wiggle room. So eh, sparingly. So now we've done that. And in fact, remember BC brush contrast uh, target. You can use Delta and just keep going over the same place, but you can even use this to go through and help you really kind of weight heavy some of those wrinkles. I'm gonna drop down to something level three. We're just gonna knock back some of that. So we don't wanna lose my detail, but I'd also don't want it to have that much surface control. So back up. And then you can kind of, again, just kind of alleviate some of this. Now for the finer stuff, I wouldn't necessarily use like cloth sim for that. That's just for more for like secondary forms. But so let's go back into our Z dam standard 02. And now we can start transitioning like up the back of the arm uh, where it's just kind of like skin like. So here, and I'm just going to kind of lightly go through and kind of crisscross. Again, this skin direction is generally this here and if you needed it to go around something like it's always nice to make skin direction and any decision you make makes sense you know so it probably it shouldn't just go through these things it, it knows it's there it feels it's there the skin's building around it or building up to it so you'd want this to kind of go around that and have it make sense so it looks like it lives in the same space because your eye will pick up on that it'll go yeah there's skin texture on it but it looks like somebody went through and just stamped it you know it, it it doesn't look like any it was actually grown that way 
and they may not pick it up. They may not be able to articulate that when people look at it, um, but they'll feel it, you know? So just little stuff like that can always, always help. So uh, here, and again, just kind of crisscross over. And this is the really fun stuff to do on faces. You know, if you get some good reference of like a rhinoceros skin, uh, instead of going through and just like stamping rhinoceros skin everywhere, which is useful sometimes, but um, in this instance, it's easy enough just to kind of go through here and just get exactly what you want. You know, make it make sense, get what you need here. And then if we need to go through, because here's the thing is this is all still very light. So if you need to go through and enhance some of this as we transition down to these big old folds down here, um, you can go back in with like your standard brush and just kind of, let's turn on a little bit of lazy radius. So tap L to turn it back on and let's turn that Z intensity way down. You can go through here and kind of, we're adding a little bit of contrast in here. And of course we can also use contrast brush, so BC, uh, I always like to use BC1. Keep that in your brain. So you can use that. You don't want to use it everywhere because that's just going to make everything the same, right? You want it to be like, as it gets closer to these big old wrinkly areas, have it pop a little more. As it goes up here onto this arm, maybe have it pop less. Maybe as around these little knobs, it pops a little more. You know, so there's undulation, there's thick and thin, there's balance, there's contrast between different areas. It's not all just same, you know? I wonder how much stuff we still have open. So here and here. Okay, so uh, now that we got this, we can also go back in with our clay brush or our clay buildup. And we're still, I mean, this isn't like super high resolution. It's still almost, we're kind of tertiary forms, but I'm not going too nuts. So around here, around these areas, we can start playing around with the idea that there's bigger pockets of crusty skin that are a little less um, susceptible to detail or skin changes. It's a little more rigid. Here and then around here. And again, I need to, this is the kind of thing where I really need to practice more and go watch videos and get caught back up in the whole creature side of things. It's been a long time there's so much you can do with sandbox art, which we call sandbox is character art, but it's also like weapons, vehicles, mechs, equipment, armor. <laughs> like, uh, it's a lot. So, and we have specialists in those fields, obviously, or at least people who um, prefer certain types of work and focus on certain types of work. The person, the people doing the skin shaders and the eyelashes and all that stuff aren't necessarily the same people that are doing the the weapons or the vehicles or the mechs. They can be. Um, I don't mind being that person because it's all interesting to me, but it does take a toll. <laughs> and I don't really make anything anymore, so it certainly takes a toll on me because I don't make shit anything so I'm not that's the thing is I'm not really good at anything anymore so don't I don't know pick and choose your battles make sure you make good decisions uh, stay stay in the game it's important and it's fun so we got this and then uh, we're, again we're not into like hyper detail yet but if you want to you can just hit uh, well let's do this let's drop down to level three if you want to make these areas just a little more subtle Again, just go in with a real light, smooth brush just to knock down the contrast in some of those areas. And that'll make the, the higher contrast areas pop as well. Because again, when everything's the same, then nothing pops. But if you allow some areas to kind of settle back, then those other areas will settle up. Does that make sense? All right. Um, and then on top of here, and again, we're this is still kind of indicating detail. So let's go into our standard brush, turn off lazy radius. And this is where you can go in and you can add, again, just 
areas of contrast, but also kind of like nodules underneath the skin, kind of crusty areas. That's another layer of detail you can add. And if you hit Control D to subdivide, now you're getting into kind of the really fine stuff. And this is where I may even consider this. This is good for like cutting in details, but now it's like super razor sharp. So not exactly what I'm looking for. So Damien standard is a little more fall offy. We'll drop that Z intensity down. And now you can kind of, again, kind of crisscross through here and you can go lower intensity first. And if you need to add more intensity, you just go into your contrast brush or go back over with your clay buildup. Um, speaking of, again, you can go through here and you can enhance some of these kind of cool wrinkles or just grab a little piece of this off of here so we're under our point count. Let's go back into our uh, pinch brush. Let's go ahead and raise our firmness up. And then we can again just keep going in here and kind of using this to maybe get some interesting skin direction fold ideas. And then you can take them or leave them. And our pinch brush had um, elasticity cloth turned on, by the way, if you're just joining us. Here, 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 here. So anyway, that's that's how I'd go about kind of doing arm skin wrinkles. But let me think on that one. There's probably some other interesting ways to go about that. Let me get caught up. Oh, look what time it is. Ah, uh, let me scooch back up. Thank you again, everybody, for your kind words. It makes me feel good. Um. Yes, dynamash, dynamash. 45 minutes wise. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree, Michael Dot. As far as like getting into ZBrush, um, <laughs> if the initial hurdle of ZBrush is what is a subtool? How do I navigate effectively? What is a file? And if you get, get over those three initial hurdles, it's kind of all downhill from there. But it, those are certainly hurdles. So I feel you. It is 8 a.m. here. Um, Jonas, how's it going, man? Um, planes plus dynamic subdivisions with thickness, infinite move. Woo, okay, hold on. Planes, dynamic subdivision, thickness, infinite move, Boolean in order to create cut lines. Let's try it. Um, if you guys haven't checked out Jonas' work, go check it out. He's got some killer hard surface stuff. So again, plane, we got a plane here, make polymesh 3D, we wanna add dynamic um geez <laughs> dynamic subdivision turn on dynamic smooth subdivision down let's add some thickness to this plane and this is another cool thing too if we go in here to bc it's we're working on a single-sided mesh that's just dynamically so again we turn dynamic off it just it's fake uh, so brush cloth bck brush cloth hook and again you can still use your cloth brushes on that type of surface and have it behave appropriately um and then it was infinite move plus boolean in order to create so if we have infinite move so infinite move is basically you have a move turned on if we orient ourselves in space here's z so you can so here we are using the move brush right uh, if you turn on depth here you have an infinite depth here set in the z direction so now when i use move oh x direction um where am I? Z forward. Infinite depth has to be turned on, stupid. And then Z. <laughs> nope. X. There we go. So now infinite move will go all the way across. So that's cool. Um, and booleans in order to create cut lines. I'm not sure where infinite move and then booleans come into play. But one thing you can do to create cut lines is we go through here. Let's go ahead and say dynamic apply. Um, and I want to create cut lines. So if everybody's familiar with knife curve by now, which you should be, you can go through and you can slice through knife curve. You can also hold down control shift space bar B radius and make your brush size small and then go through here and then hold down alt and then I'll go ahead and cut through uh, panel lines as well, which is a kind of an interesting way to go through and then you can say auto groups and then you've got these. Now we're, we're using very, very low res meshes, so that's why you got kind of blonky uh, corners. Uh, however, if you go through here, oops, let's say apply, let's go ahead and crease, um, dynamic, uh, 
Jeez, sorry. Uh, thickness down. Crease level. Smooth side of let's, you know, let's say two. Let's say apply. Let's say delete lower, and then with a little bit more resolution. Again, hold down Alt. It should help. And you can go nuts with this thing. Like stop. Normally, you know, I wouldn't cut a panel line like that necessarily, but if you want to, you can. And then I'll go ahead and slice it through. And then here. Well, let's not get into it, but um, yeah. Good name, a reference in our station by a guy named Ivan Pavlisko. Hey, it's almost like me. All kind of bodybuilder scans in different positions. Excellent. Check that out. The pavs. You got to look for those pavs. They're out there. They'll get you. Uh, I forgot to struggle with cut lines, basically. That was a cool way to use Booleans. Yeah, I'd have to see that. Make a video for me, Jonas. Um, <laughs> um and Conius, yes, you got it, John. You, um, that was that muscle we were talking about earlier. I stay, thank you, Neil Surfer. <laughs> Name for sculptors is a good one, yes. Uh, I do have, uh, let me see, go to my drive here. You know, this, uh, I need to update this. It doesn't have my Lazen taco books, but for what it's worth, um, Share, get link, copy link, done. I'm going to paste this in just a second. It's a bookshelf. Um, use Blender. So if so, do you know how to export ZBrush to Blender for animation? Uh, yes. I mean, if you're just exporting a model for animation, any you export however you want. As far as, oh, I need to keep this around. Um... If you're, oh, there's nothing. Dynamic cloth to Maya. Doing this, so this is actually in his channel, Steve Talowski. He'll he'll have. Okay, let me go ahead and send this. Sorry, it's gonna knock me back down. He'll go through how to get the Olympic cache, or not the Olympic cache. It's whatever cache ZBrush has animation cache into Blender into Maya. So the Blender step will be what you're looking for, I think. Uh, do, do, do. cool. See the pressure things. Yes. Um, yes. And an enemy ref too is I have, you know, I got my, I got my boys right here. So one of them I got from, one of them I got from Proco. And then one of them I got, um, from, I don't remember where I got it from. I think I just got it from whatever website was selling at the time. So one of them's painted and muscly and has dowel rods in it, and one of them has magnets, but they're both good. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dynamesh Ziri Mesh History Project subdivide to get the detail back. Yes, that's that's that's. I mean, there's a couple different ways to do that, but yeah. Uh, and then it's after good transform and Z Mesh right for the best topology. Um, artist modeling anatomy in Dynamesh. Yes, model up to a certain point your anatomy and then Ziri Mesh and then finish it out. And it was usually what I do. Position the gizmo using one subtool and lock its position in any way to bring that same gizmo position to a different subtool. I don't think so. I, I, know, what, I know what you're trying to do. So, you know what you could do is you could for, <laughs> this is kind of silly, but if we had another subtool on here, and we split that off, and it's like, okay, I have, I have a gizmo position I want to transfer to this one. It's gonna be hacky, but let's see. Oh, you know what, we need to, let's turn off the smooth modifier, subdivide, delete lower. Oh, geez. So divide, not that many, there we go. So now I have a gizmo position that I, I alt tap on this one and I wanna transfer it over to this one. So what I could possibly do is I could go, okay, this gizmo position that I like, let's duplicate this off. <laughs> it's gonna be silly, but stay with me. John Tremont, five topology, delete hidden, merge down, alt tap, on that 
position that you wanted <laughs> and then delete hidden I don't know does that seem <gasps> okay here's what you could do so we have a position well hell we could just do the whole thing so it's silly but it's like here's my gizmo position duplicate this off merge down ah stupid hold on I, I got this it'll work give me a second let me get out of the damn knife okay here delete head we have an object we have a gizmo position we duplicate so we keep this one just plain jane whatever we want merge down Control shift tap geometry modified topology delete hidden hit w the gizmo doesn't change is that the is that silly yes is it doable also yes um use a plane as the boolean sub and also just have an object that you want to cut into that way you can cut into an object that i actually doing yes uh so chi vang was doing that back in the day so basically what that is is yeah we have a plane here if I if I understand correctly, so this is what he was doing. I want to say like Zebra Summit, was it four R eight? Zebra Summit four R eight. Look that up. Um, split mass points, and then well, uh, this was before dynamic. So yeah, we, he did he didn't have the dynamic stuff. So that that's totally cool. Is just the ability to go, hey, you know what? Add that thickness dynamically as opposed to having to worry about maintaining those. So the other thing too that you could do with edges so we do have edge extrude now so let's go ahead and say this is set to subtractive we'll push this below we'll hide that and we, if we turn on live boolean you'll see what we're doing so basically just slicing through with a dynamic thickness like uh, jonas said and then now no matter what you do to this we can scale it out and then we can go through here and be like you know what let's go into solo mode let's do first let's make it so we can see it um and this edge is going to be easier to get to, harder to get to. That's easier to get to. I just can't see it because the thickness is white. Uh, insert single edge loop. So ins, uh, insert edge loop here. So we're going to go here and here. And it's a single thing. So we can say W. Ah, let's just do this. Let's say insert. But then we can also like transpose an edge. And we can move this out. And again, as we're moving, all of this is just booleaning through the object. So if we move this back out and we say, OK, let's bevel this here we want to soften that transition out and then we'll say insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation we want to kind of pull this around and make it like that so again we're just modifying this to fit fit our narrative and then cut through um, and then again we do still have extrude edge here so if we want to go back into extrude edge edge loop we can say this we can also tap alt and it'll go all the way around our object, but I think just Alt is fine. You tap, hold down, tap Shift to transition between the different parallel options or free. Um, what else? Yes, yes, interesting. I'm trying to think if there is. Um, If you ever want to see what you're doing, just turn on polyframe. I had mass turned on, which is why. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Um, yeah. So just so I let's see. Um, there he is. This is a this is a really good one. So some of that is kind of in here. I think he does have this, but again, some of this was before functionality that was introduced. So again, that's a four or eight. So it's a one million years ago. Um, cool. Let me get cut back up here. Sorry. Uh, oh yeah, and then moving the infinite. Moving infinite is the other thing too. So instead of me going through and doing this janky line, you could do very nice lines with move infinite, like Jonas is saying. Go through here and. So you grab all the points all the way across and cut in very nice stuff. Yes, that sounds legit. Good call. Um, cool. Thank you, pawns. Sci-fi weapon hard surface tutorial next time, please. Let me... I'm going to do a, just a monster hard surface, like all the whole kitchen sink, um, one of these days. One of these days. One of these years. Um, 
yeah yeah check that out he's got some good stuff in there interesting stuff uh smoothing too that was a cool thing to use yeah that's totally cool i'm gonna use that can i steal that <laughs> uh what would be the easiest way to flatten a surface of an imported stl that might be wanky um flatten a surface I mean, it's just like let me see if i understand correctly it kind of depends on the surface you want to flatten um so we have like say this is an imported stl and we want to flatten a surface uh like the bottom of the feet for instance like i just want to i want them to be able to um like stand up right so we'll go through here and then you could use booleans uh all sorts of stuff but i would probably just for quick and easy is clip curve so control shift pull this out that gradient is going to pull back up from the gradient to the line and then you can just cut straight across and there you go that'll that'll flatten that out um if it's if it's a surface that's like on an on an angle like this you may need to go in there with like maybe um trim dynamic once you get a kind of a surface indicated in there and then maybe your brush trims it's like brush uh is it trim brushes i'm looking for element opqrst trim normal dynamic trim normal Ooh, this one has back face so you can actually go through here some of these trim brushes will like pick up a surface normal um let's see this this thing might just get auto loaded brush trim dynamic maybe that's what we want there we go so you can kind of go through here and you can kind of trim to a to a just an oblique or just whatever surface normal you want to pick from you can just kind of trim across that surface and kind of have it eh, maybe keep your brush size smaller brush trim adaptive you can also hold down alt and pull up to that surface if you wanted to but anyway or clip um or booleans uh, a couple different ways you can do that cool oh that's another thing too on the transpose stuff uh that that for you know speaking of the hard surfacey thing remember you do have fall off here so we have w turned on uh by default it's just a hunt like focal shift of 100 but if you wanted to like you know you can always go through here and bend arc stuff if you need to uh, but you can also go through here and hit w jeez hit w and then focal shift up and you can use this as a way to kind of bend stuff around too and you can use that with masking so kind of mask and blur oops blur just control tap to blur that mask and now with that fall off enabled you can go through here and kind of use this maybe not scale but use that to kind of bend some things and move some things um still seems to want to kind of pull it go way up actually way down is what we're looking for anyway i don't know cool um mesh mixer has a magnet function or something similar let me see mesh mixer magnet Oh, it's like bridge. Sorry, that's annoying music. Um, I don't use Mesh Mixer, so I'm uneducated in this particular. There probably is. I would have to know exactly what magnet is in order to answer that. What am I looking at here? Where's the magnet part? Magnets, embedded magnets. How to add magnets to 3D print the mesh mixture attract. So you get a wonky surface. See everybody, this is why I watch all my YouTube videos at 2x speed. Get to the part so you have a flat surface here 
Oh, and you want to pull down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got that. We got that. We got that. So, yes, if you want to pull to a specific um, thing here, that would be the project brush. And you can use project history. So, for example, we have a surface cube. Let's turn off X symmetry here. Let's go ahead and say split mass points. And let me think. We want to project to the surface. Delete hidden here. Hold on. Um, control shift, go back to select rectangle. I'm going to put in a surface of Q mesh, polygroup ball. So we have a surface in here. I'm going to flip. And I want to project a mesh to just the surface here. Maybe the bottom of a foot or. Yeah, if we want to like flatten, ah, uh, focal shift down to negative 100, sorry. Here, and it could be any surface, it doesn't necessarily have to be that surface here. So then, so we have a surface and then we have another surface. So I'm gonna turn on floor, and uh, actually I may have just be able to do this one-sided. Let's see if this will work. I'm gonna isolate this, say delete hidden. I'm gonna give myself a little more resolution. We're gonna turn off the smooth modifier, divide that up a couple times, delete lower. And then now, if I have the Z project brush, there's a, if it was behind, I could do, uh, there's a BM. There's a matchmaker brush that'll like match surfaces to the other, but the problem is, the problem is it's behind. So if I go through, and try to matchmaker this, cause I can matchmaker, you see I just did it. I can matchmake this to the surface behind it, um, camera based, but not the opposite direction I don't think. Cause it has to be, it's camera based. So in this instance, let's go back here to our surface. Let's say double. So we want to project this surface down to that surface. So let's go B, Z, P, the Z project brush. And that'll project this surface down to that one. However, if I take this one and I hold down Alt, that'll project that surface to the one in front of it. So basically it's the Z project brush. Let's turn on transparency so we can see it in action. So with Z project brush, B, Z, P, you can go through and again, if you hold down alt, it'll basically, yeah, just project out. And if it did, the object doesn't exist anymore, it will stop projecting. So just get your camera positioned and then hold down alt with your Z project brush. And that'll kind of be that, that kind of magnet thing there. And that could be, again, that could be any surface. Um, now you could use project history for that too, but it might be easier with Z project because you actually have the object in here and you can see what you're doing and what you're going to. Yeah, I think that's your bet bet. Now, the one, one caveat to that is if I have this here, I do have double turned on and I have my normals facing this way, let's do a test. Let's flip these normals, select this, B, Z, P, hold down Alt. Oh, it still works, okay, either direction. That was always worried about is like, will it see that if the normals are the wrong way or the right way, it doesn't really matter in this case. Yes, okay, so Z project brush, as long as you have an object there, normals, whatever direction, use your Z project brush and that'll go ahead and project those verts straight out. Whew, sorry about that. That was easier than I made it out to be. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel and you do a search for workstation, here's my latest build. Yes. Uh, yeah, and there's a there's a there's a ton of other stuff too. Um, if you have W and you hold down Control, is it Control and Scale? You can actually flatten along that surface plane too. 
if you wanted to. You could even Z scale to that if you wanted to. Um, yeah, like I said, there's so many ways to skin them cats. Cool. Uh, would you go with Maya or Topo Gun or something else? They're all the same. Like any any topology thing in 2022 is like edges and verts and snapping. So I I, I think they're all very varying degrees of that. <laughs> Until they have a button that says just do it, they're all the same to me. Um, skin pores and wrinkles video. My grandma sculpt is off uh, due to the wrinkles. Um, I don't really. I, I don't do a ton of skin pour and wrinkles. It's been a long time since I've done it, so I don't I don't have anything. I don't think, but there's got to be stuff out there. Um, cool. Yeah. Good luck. Hardware right now is uh, a bit much, but thanks everybody. I know this is kind of a weird stream, but we did it, and uh, and isn't really the friends we made along the way that's important. So uh, I'm going to sign out. See you all next month, probably. I'm, I'll try to stream between now and then. Um, but, you know, have fun. See you next week.